Very well, let us start chapter six, 6.1, set theory and the definition. First of all, remember that when we talked about sets, we say that a set is a collection of objects, numbers, values. We also define being a subset. Suppose X and Y are two sets. We say that X is a subset of Y if for any element in X, that element lands in Y. So for any element like A in X, you can conclude that A belongs to Y. For example, suppose you have set A equals to a set including just one element. Set B is a set including two elements. One element is one, second element is another set itself. Question says, is A a subset of B? If I take any random element in A, can I conclude that that random element is in B? That's obvious. A only has one element, which is one itself, number one. If I take this random element, that element is actually here in the second set. So for sure, you can say that A is a subset of B. Part B says, is A a proper subset of B? If there is no chance two sets are equal to each other, they say that they are proper subsets of each other. As you can see, set A has only one element. Set B has two elements. There is no way set A be equal to set B. So we say that A is a proper subset of B. There are always elements in B that you cannot map them into A. That's why we call A a proper subset of B. For example, N is a proper subset of Z. There is no way these two sets are equal to each other. Proving and disproving subset relations. So suppose you have two sets defined this way. The first set A says I have all integers like M such that M is 6R plus 12 for some integers in Z. B says I have all those integers like N such that N can be written as multiples of three. Part A says, Alphine approved that A is a subset of B. B proved that actually A is a subset of B, and C disproved that B is a subset of A. Very well. Our outline for the proof can be like this. Suppose X is a particular element in A, we need to show that X is in B. So mathematically, you can write for any random element X in A, we need to show that X belongs to. Okay, now let us prove that actually for any random element in A, that random element can be written as an element in B. Suppose X is in A. Since X is in A, it means that X can be written as 6R plus 12. Very well, okay. If I factor out six, I end up with R plus two. I don't need six. Take a look at elements in B. Elements in B are multiples of three. So we need to factor out three. 
If I factor out three, I have two R plus four. Let us call this S. So any random element in A can be written as a format of an element in B. So any element in A lands in B. It means that A is a subset of B. Now let us prove C. Our goal is to show that there is no way B is a subset of A. It means that there is at least one element in B such that that element is not in A. It is outside A. Very well. For example, suppose X is equal to 3. 3 is an element in B. If you take S equals to 1, 3 is in B. Okay. Is 3 in A? So if 3 is in A, it means that 3 can be written as 6R plus 12. So what's wrong with this? It means that 6R is equal to negative 9 or R is equal to negative 3 halves. But R is an integer. There is no way we can write R as a fraction. So we just found one value like 3 in B such that 3 is not in A. So there is no way B is a subset of A. We can find other elements as well. How do you prove equality between two sets? We say that two sets are equal to each other if and only if A is a subset of B and at the same time B is a subset of A. That's how we prove equality between sets when it comes to proof. For example, suppose set A is defined as all those integers that are multiples of two. Second set B says, I have all those integers that can be written as two B minus two for some integers like B. Question says, is A equal to B? Very well. We need to show that set A is a subset of B and set B is a subset of A. First, let us prove that A is a subset of B. How do we do that? We need to take a random element in set A and show that that element lands in B. This is our goal. Okay, take any random element in A, like X. X can be written as 2A. Very well. Can I convert 2A into a random element in B, into the random format? We can define B to be A plus 1. If B is A plus 1, then you're done. Any element in A can be written as a format of 2B minus 2. So by taking, by defining B to be A plus 1, 2B minus 2, by doing a little bit of algebra, is equal to 2A, which was our X. Now let us show that any random element in B is in A. For any random element in B, that element can be written as 2B minus 2. Very well. I need to show that 
this element is equal to 2a. If I factor out 2, I have b minus 1. So if I define a to be b minus 1, then I am done. Our next stop is to form a new set using two sets. So operations between sets. First of all, you can take the union of two sets and form a new set. This new set, A union B, includes all elements in the bigger set such that X is in A or X is in B. What is U? U is universal set. This universal set includes all those little sets and the rest of them. So A union B is a new set including all elements either in the first set or in the second set or in their intersection. A second operation is taking intersection between two sets denoted by A intersection B. It includes all those elements common or repeated between two sets. They can find the difference between two sets or we call it the relative complement of A in B denoted by B minus A. All those elements in B such that they are not in A. And finally, the complement of set A denoted by AC, if you use different books, you might see A prime or A bar instead of AC. So the same meaning is all those elements in the universal set such that they are not in set A itself. We can also visualize the operation between sets using Venn diagram. The union between two sets includes everything. The intersection between them just include overlapping data. B minus A, all elements in B, such that they are not in A. And A complement all elements in U that are not in A. You learned about intervals before. All intervals have set theory definitions. Open interval A, B can be defined as the set of all elements, all numbers, such that those numbers are between A and B. A, B, all elements in between. A and B are not included. Bracket AB is the set of all elements such that A is between A and B, A and B included. So A is included, B is included, and we have a closed interval. Half open, half closed interval, X is between A and B, A is not included, B is included. So half open, half closed interval. A, B. The same, left hand side is closed, right hand side is open, and this is your half open, half closed interval. We can also define rays, A to infinity, which is the set of all real numbers such that those numbers are greater than A. Bracket A, infinity, includes all those elements in R such that X is greater than or equal to A. 
the same four intervals on the left hand side. For example, suppose your universal set is given, it's R. So U is equal to R. B is half open, half closed interval, zero to one. Then A is half open, half closed interval, negative one to zero. Question says, find the union, intersection, difference, and complement of the following sets. A union B, all elements either in A or in B or in their intersection. So of course we shade all numbers from left to right and all these numbers in between. The intersection has only one element, which is zero. The difference is all values in B such that they are not in A. So you shade all values in B and you exclude zero. And finally, A complement. A is half open, half closed interval, zero, negative one to zero. So A complement includes all elements on the left hand side of negative one, all elements on the right hand side of negative one, and zero is not included, negative one is included. Definition, we define two sets to be disjoint if they have no element in common. A intersection B is empty. There is no intersection between these two sets. We call them disjoint sets. We can also take some other sets and define pairwise disjoint or non-overlapping sets. Sets A sub one, A sub two, A sub three, up to A sub n, or you can just continue that, are mutually disjoint if there is no intersection between each pair. A1 intersection, A2 is empty. A1 intersection, A3, empty. A2 intersection, A3 is empty, and so. We call this collection mutually disjoint or pairwise disjoint set. By using mutually disjoint sets, we can define a partition for another set. So suppose you have a big set like A, your goal is to just partition that big set into smaller sets. We say that a finite or infinite collection of non-empty sets, A sub one, A sub two, A sub three, and so on, is a partition of a set if and only if, first of all, the union of these sets is equal to A itself. A3 union the rest is equal to A itself. The second condition, they are mutually disjoint. AI intersection AJ is always empty. Note that I cannot be equal to J. Let us go over one example to feel more comfortable about partition. Very well. Suppose set A, the bigger set, is one, two, three, four, five, and six. We have smaller sets. Question says, is A1, A2, a3, a partition of A, it means that if we assume the following, 
definition that is defined here, are these sets satisfy those conditions? First of all, are these disjoint, mutually disjoint? A1 has no intersection with A2. A2 has no intersection with A3. A3 has no intersection with A1. So, so far, they are mutually disjoint. If I take the union of these three sets, it includes one, two, three, four, five, and six. So let us take a look at A. A is one, two, three, four, five, and six. The first set, one and two. This is my A1. The second set, three and four. And the last set is five and six. So as you can see, here you have a partition for set A. Part B says, suppose Z is the set of all integers. T sub zero is all those numbers that are divisible by three. T1 is the set of all numbers that when you divide them by three, the remainder is one. T sub two is the set of all integers. If you divide them by three, the remainder is two. Is T sub zero, T sub one, T sub two a partition of Z? 3k, 3k plus 1, 3k plus 2. So if you list some of the elements here in 3k, it's going to be 0 plus minus 3 plus minus 6 plus minus 9 and so on. If you list some of the elements here, if you plug in 0, you get 1. If you plug in 1, you get 4. If you plug in negative one, you get negative two, and so on. 3k plus two. If I plug in zero, I get two. If I plug in one, I get five. If I plug in negative one, I get negative one, and so on. It seems like I have a partition. All these elements, all these sets, they have nothing in common. The intersection is going to be empty. If I take the union of all of these elements, it's going to be equal to Z. You can also partition Z using even and odd numbers. 2k, 2k plus 1. You can partition Z using factors including 4. So 4k, 4k plus 1, 4k plus 2, and 4k plus 3. And you can continue this process. 6.2, properties of sets. Some theorems. Inclusion of intersection. For all sets A and B, a intersection B is included in A. A intersection B is also included in B. Inclusion in union A is a subset of A union B. Also B is a subset of A union B. Transitive property. If A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, then you can conclude A as a subset of C. Officially, we say that X is in X union Y. We write it as X is in X or X is in Y. So union is equivalent to or. X belongs to the intersection, it means that X belongs to the first set and X belongs to the second set. 
x belongs to x minus b. The difference, the meaning of that is x belongs to first set and x is not in the second set. x belongs to the complement of set x. It means that x is not in x. And finally, when it comes to cross product, Cartesian product, x and y belongs to x cross y. It means that x is in the first set and y is in the second set. Suppose we want to prove one of these theorems. The instruction for the rest of them are the same. So suppose you want to show that A intersection B is a subset of A. Remember that. To show that you have a subset, you need to take any random element in the intersection and show that that element is in the bigger set. So let us take a random element in the intersection, like x, and show that that element lands in the bigger set. x is in A and B. Your goal is to show that x is in A. First of all, since x is in the intersection, it means that x is in the first set and x is in the second set by using the definition of intersection. X is in A and at the same time, X is in B. So is X in A? Of course, you're done. Set identities. When we can replace one set with another set? Commutative laws. First of all, A union B is the same as B union A. It means that wherever you see A union B, you can quickly write B union A. You can replace or switch these two. You have the same thing for intersection. A intersection B is the same as B intersection A. Associative law. A union B union C is the same as A union with the group B union C. The group A intersection B, intersection C is A intersection with grouping B and C. Distributive law. We can distribute union over intersection. This is important. You can distribute intersection over union, left to right, and right to left. Identity laws. A union with empty set is A itself. A intersection with, with universal set is A itself. Complement law. A union with its complement is nothing but the universal set. But the intersection between A and its complement is always empty. There is nothing in common between them. Double complement law. The complement of complement of a set is equal to the set itself. Idempotent laws. A union with A is always A. A intersection with A is always A. Universal bound laws. A union with universal set, of course it's universal set. A intersection with empty set is always empty. De Morgan's law. First of all, if we take the complement of the union, we have to convert union into intersection. If we take the complement of intersection, it is equal to union. Absorption law, a union with a intersection B is equal to A itself. A intersection with 
A union B is always equal to A. The complement of universal set is empty set, and the complement of empty set is universal set. One of the most important relation between difference and intersection is A minus B is the same as A intersection B complement. We can use these laws when it comes to proving set properties. Very well, proving set identities. First of all, to show that two sets are equal to each other, you need to show that they are subsets of each other. Suppose we try to prove distributive law for sets. Suppose our goal is to show that A union over B intersection C is the same as A union B intersection A union C. Our goal is to show that X is equal to Y. So we need to show that any random element in X is an element in Y and any random element in Y is an element of X. Very well. First of all, let us show that A union B intersection C is a subset of A union B intersection A union C. So let us take a random element in A union B intersection C. By using the definition of a union, X is in A or X is in B intersection C. Let us divide this into two cases. In the first case, if we assume X is in A, then for sure X is in any other union. It means that X belongs to a union C as well. So A is here. X is in A. So if you take A union with B, X is still there. If you take A union C, X is still there. So X belongs to A union B. Also X belongs to A union C. It means that X belongs to A union B and a union C. Second case. So we're done with this part. Second case. Suppose X belongs to B intersection C. What's the meaning of that? It means that by using the definition of intersection, X is in B and X is in C. X is in B, so of course X is in A union B. It belongs to any other union. X is in C, so X belongs to any union. Remember that the connector between them is AND. So X belongs to a union B, AND. X belongs to a union C. X belongs to the intersection. So in either cases, we prove that X belongs to a union B and a union C. So we proved X is a subset of Y. Now we show that X has Y in it. So your goal is to show that A union B intersection, A union C is a subset of A union B and C. So let us take a random element X in A union B, intersection A union C, then we show that that element lands here. By using the definition of intersection, X is in A union B, and at the same time, X is in A union C. Suppose you take two different cases. We're not sure if X belongs to A or not. So we have to consider two cases, two scenarios. In the first case, 
x, suppose x is in A. Since x is in A, for sure you can conclude x is in A union with any other set. So we're done. What if x is in, not in A? x is not in A. So since x is in B union A, x is in C union A, x belongs to the union, definitely. So x belongs to at least C or B. Okay. We can conclude that x belongs to both of these two sets. Why is that? Because x is not in A and x belongs to the intersection. So x must be in the intersection of B and C. It doesn't matter if x is in A or not, eventually x belongs to A union with B intersection C. So we just proved that y is also a subset of x. It means that x is equal to y or A union B intersection C is the same as A union B intersection A union C. Let us prove one of the De Morgan's laws for sets. Our goal is to show that the complement of the union is equal to the intersection of complements. So to show that two sets are equal to each other, we need to show that they are subsets of each other. X is a subset of Y and Y is a subset of X. To show that X is a subset of Y, it means that we need to show that A union B complement is a subset of A complement intersection B complement. So let us take a random element in A union B complement by using the definition of complement, X is not in A union B. What's the meaning of that? It means that it is false to say that X is in A or X is in B. It's false to say that X is in A or x is in b. So if you distribute the negation, x is not in a, the negation of or is and, x is not in b. If you rewrite this in mathematical form, it means that x belongs to complement of a and x belongs to complement of b. It means that x belongs to a complement Intersection, B complement. Now let us prove that Y is included in X. It means that our goal is to show that A complement, intersection, B complement is included in a complement of their union. Take a random element in the intersection. So what's the meaning of that? It means that X is in A complement and X is in B complement. By the same discussion, we can show that X is not in A and X is not in B. It means that X, it is false to say that X is in A or X is in B. It is false to say that X is in A or X is in B. To distribute the negation, X is not in A and X is not in B. So we just proved that these two sets are equal. And finally, on chapter six, Suppose A and B are two sets. 
A is a subset of B, then A intersection B is A, A union B is B. So here you have set B, set A is included in set B, the intersection is A, the union must be B. Suppose we try to prove A, we take a random element in A intersection B, and we show that that random element lands in A. So X belongs to A intersection B, it means that X is in A and X is in B. So of course, X belongs to A and we're done. For any element in A, since A is a subset of B, that element lands in B. So X is in A and X is in B. We can prove A is a subset of A intersection B. For part B, you can take any random element in A union B and show that that random element belongs to B. X is in A or X is in B. So X is in A or X is in B. Since X is in B, you're done. Now suppose X is in B, your goal is to show that X belongs to A union B. X is in B. It means that X belongs to any union with B. So it is proved. Since they are subset of each other, it means that they are equal to each other. 